us die. There's one camera I always find myself reaching for. It's taken the photography community by storm. And it's taught me more about photography than any of the masters. The Fujifilm X100V has changed the way I look at the world. It's opened my eyes to more beauty than any moment and has fueled my creativity in new ways I could never imagine. It has made me the photographer I am today. You see that? That is 92,100 images shot in the X100V without using burst mode. And this video today is not some sort of clickbait six month review of the X100V. I have taken this camera around the world, shot it professionally at Grand Prix, documented historical events and used this camera nearly every day. And I'd like to think that I've got a pretty good understanding of the actual practical benefits and drawbacks of this camera. And up front, although I would love this camera, I have one major reservation about it. As there are so many reviews talking about the specs of this camera, I'm going to completely ignore them and only talk about the unquantifiable, intangible feeling you get when using this camera and to try and put that into words and to see whether the X100V is, whether it lives up to the hype at the end of the day. And there are several attributes of this camera that I haven't found anywhere else. I've used Nikon, I've used Sony, I've used my friend's Canons, and none of them compare, they're not quite the same, which is why it is so frustrating that I can't call this camera the complete package because you know I want to. So what's the vision of every photographer? Hopefully it's the same for you as it is for me. In my eyes, the goal is to not take banger photos, as anyone with an 85mm f1.4 can take a banger. The goal is to consistently get better at taking photos by understanding the fundamentals of what actually makes a photo good and then to practice them. And so what's this got to do with the X100V and the finance world's favourite concept, compound interest? You see, 35mm is the flattest, most boring focal length, right? There is nothing pro about this. There's no compression, there's no wide angle distortion, no, no pro look, right? And when I first picked up this camera, it made me realize that I was trash because my cool photos that I'd previously taken were reliant on the lens characteristics that I could hide behind. And it made me realize that in order to create an image that looks cool at 35 millimeter, you've got to have a really good understanding of the fundamentals. You've got to understand contrast, visual weighting, subject separation, shape, story, leading lines, all of these different things, and to play with them in the appropriate manner. And it really felt like my stabilizing wheels in photography had been ripped off and that my actual skills were getting found out when I was using this. And so, what has all of this got to do with compound interest? I promise that this is not an advert for any finance related stuff. Anyway, in short, the longer you leave your money invested, the faster it will grow because you are making gains on the gains that you have made. And let's say you want to get really good at Call of Duty and you can play Call of Duty on the PlayStation, on the Xbox and your PC. It's exactly the same game, same mechanics, same weapons, as far as I'm aware. And you just use different controllers or different inputs and so let's say your goal is you're trying to learn the game and you're switching from playstation that you're enjoying to pc and then to xbox and then back to pc and you're constantly switching do you think that this is the best way to learn the game no why because you aren't getting the compounding learning effects that getting used to a single setup facilitates and gives you and encourages you and I think that this is so relevant to photography. Do you think it's best to keep switching lenses and the equipment that you use? To get used to shooting at say 35 mm and then switch to 50 mm and then to 75 mm and you have to keep warming up to the different focal lengths? Or should you stick with one lens and compound your learning experience, making gains on your gains on your gains? And so to wrap this all up, this is why I think that the X100V is the greatest teaching tool of any camera. The 35 millimeter focal length forces you to understand the fundamentals because you are restricted to the boring focal length. And then you're compounding your learning experience of the fundamentals over and over and over again, which in my eyes 
puts your learning of photography on steroids. And I'm telling you this, that everyone that I know who puts in the reps with the X100V has zoomed straight past their mates in terms of their understanding and skill set in photography. If you want this to be you, you have been warned. The pickup ability of a camera is another under-talked about element of the whole photography experience and arguably the most important one. Because in order to take good photos, you've got to have your camera in your hand, right? And we need to think differently. Instead of thinking what makes us want to pick up our camera and to take photos with it, we need to consider what makes us not want to pick up our camera. Because as photographers, we are going about our lives always thinking, that'd be a nice photo. Yet we don't take the picture. Why is that? I think that it's a trade-off between the effort and the reward that you get at the end of it, which is pretty much how humans make any sort of decision. And most of the resistance comes from the cognitive effort of making decisions. The more options and decisions, the bigger the mental load. And so let's be more practical. If we need to decide which lens, which camera, which focal length, which settings, which Instagram influencers presets should we apply to make these bangers and to get the most likes? That is a lot of decisions that we've had to make before we've even considered the composition and the actual process of taking a photo. And let's be real. We are not going to take our cameras out of our rucksack to attach the lens, to stick it on a tripod, to put on a filter and to set up an external trigger release for a photo that we're pretty sure is gonna suck. It is not worth the effort. So, as a street photographer, it is important for us to remove as many decisions as we can so we can experiment with taking trash photos. <laughs> because I don't know about you, but once I start taking photos, I don't stop. I take far more than I initially intended, either experimenting with different angles to get the shot that I want, or something else is going to catch my eye. And so the fewer decisions that we have, the less activation effort we need in order to overcome the threshold of do I take this photo? Because we need to be trying new things and experimenting and a camera with as little resistance to that sort of process is going to facilitate that. And I don't know of a camera that comes close to the pickup ability of the X100V and therefore the creativity of the X100V because the single focal length, the small size and the quick startup time means that you are ready to rumble as soon as possible, which means that you try all of these that's probably not gonna work, shots, all the time, which I love. And this means that as a photographer, you are experimenting more, you are learning more, you're taking pop shots, which usually don't work, but when they do, they absolutely bang. And because there is such little resistance to taking shots, you don't feel the need to take a good photo. And if the autofocus decides to do what the autofocus does, not really work that well, it doesn't matter because you have barely put any effort into taking the photo. And this lack of resistance means we even take photos of things we wouldn't usually take photos of, like documenting our lives. And these images are the real ones, the ones that we are genuinely going to treasure for the rest of our lives. Taking photos from your eye line is the same as everyone else. And often it is quite boring. The perfect shot is often the awkward shot. And whether that gold is that you're shooting way above your head, or you're super down low to the ground, or you're sticking your arm off the edge of a boat, I, I don't know. But it's all about experimentation, right? And now imagine this. You pick up your big Canon 1DX with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. It feels solid, it feels robust, as if if someone was to start something with you, you could bop them with it and the camera would be A-OK. -okay. And now, whilst this setup on paper, is gonna take fantastic photos. Do you think you're gonna feel agile, able to react quickly to these fleeting moments? To have the wrist strength to hold it high above your head, single-handedly like a top-heavy flamingo? <laughs> when shooting street photography, it is important to have a camera that is thoroughbouty out of 10 because this fuels you to try new things, to experiment. And the X100V feels like a toy. You bet that I'm lifting it over my head, sticking it between rails and laying it down on the floor. And as a result, I capture different perspectives, new angles, and most importantly, have a fun experience with this camera. And this is what we crave as photographers. I want to feel enthusiastic about trying things. To have a camera that encourages me is just the absolute dream. 
And what's even better is that you combine the third bounty vibe with the fact that the X100V looks like a little retro cam and it's not a very serious looking camera. And so people around you don't feel intimidated by the, the presence of especially the front element. Your friends play up to the camera. They have fun in front of it. Strangers pretend that you don't exist, walk straight in front of your camera. And this means that you're able to capture genuine authentic street experiences. And this is, to me, something that is really, really special, which is why it frustrates me so much that I can't call it the perfect camera. So why isn't this the perfect camera? As a professional, my only job is to create images that serves my clients' purposes. That is, that is it. They couldn't care less which system I use, whether that's Fuji, Sony, Hasselblad, Leica, film, or a tin can with a pinhole punch through it, which is great because it, this means that we can use the kit that we like. But I can't trust the X100V to be a workhorse, to do shoots day in, day out, week after week because a lot of shoots are very pressurized, especially when you're working with athletes. And on media days, there are a million different photographers for sponsors, for social, for PR, for the championship, just a bunch of different people. And so the athlete's time is super limited and in high demand. And you'll be there waiting. And when you're given your cue, it's your time. And you've got to nail the shot quickly and then get out there so the next photographer can come in. And for a combination of reasons, I just can't trust the X100V. The autofocus sometimes likes to hunt or miss focus. The single SD card means that you don't have any backups, should something go wrong. And I've had the camera just jam up for no particular reason several different times. And when it works, this camera is perfect. But when there is so much on the line and you can't have your kit do that to you. And so if I'm ever doing a professional shoot and I want to use the X100V, I always have my Sony kit right next to me as, as a fail safe. Yeah, this camera, is always by my side. Whether I'm shooting photo or video for clients, I'm always picking up this camera. I enjoy the experience using it every single time. My favorite photos I've ever taken on it, by far, but with this camera. And I'm sure I'm gonna be using it 30 years down the line. And so for me, although it's not perfect, <laughs> I love it.